Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be taking a look at a really great atmospheric weathering effect for your models, which is applying rust to them. And there's loads of ways of doing this, so in this video what we're going to do is take a look at four completely different ways of doing it. We're going to start out with one that uses your normal acrylic paints, and then after that what we'll do is move on to showing you how to use weathering powders for it. After that we've got this really interesting one called U-Rust, which is literal rust on your miniatures. And then after that we're going to have a use of the Dirty Down Rust, which is a really fun one to use that you can manipulate. Hope you enjoy it, let's get to it. The first method for rust we're going to take a look at is a real classic because this one's very straightforward, very easy to do, and it's very reliable as well and easy to control. It is just to use some acrylic paints for it to simulate the effect of rust. And to do this, you can use multiple colors or just one. I quite commonly would use just one, which I'll talk about soon. But in this example here, what we're going to use is three to show you how you can build it up. Now to do this, what you need to do first of all is prepare the area that you're going to rust up. And for our example, what I've got here is a barricade from Necromunda. And all I've done with this is I just painted it silver, then I washed it with a brown and wash, then dry brushed it with a light silver to get that kind of grimy effect to it. And what we'll do is add some rust into all the bolts and rivets and things like that. So to do it, what we're going to do, as I mentioned, is use three colours, but uh, what this is going to do mainly is revolve around warmish brown kind of colours that we're going to thin right down, then apply in a controlled fashion to get those streaks of rust to build it up to how we want it to be. Now if you want to do this quickly and you're new to it, then a great colour to use that can just go on its own is Scrag Brown. And this is one we commonly use for rust effects, and you'll see it on things like when we painted the Hecaton Land Fortress or when we do Undead. It looks pretty Particularly good in chain mail. But for this example, we're going to build it up by doing some browns around it. So we'll start out with some Mornfang brown, and then we're going to use that scrag brown, and then we'll finish off with a little bit of Bestigore flesh, just with some little dots of it. But first of all, what we want is that Mornfang brown. And to do this, get yourself a medium sized brush, any will do, but I've got a size one here from Artisopus. And what we need to do is really thin this down with water on the palette. And you can use a wet palette or a dry palette, the choice is yours, but just get some of the paint on there, then add lots of water to it and be really, really generous because we want to make this really inky. Bring it right down to this point here, you see. So it's really, really quite thin. Then all you do is just load up some on your brush and just start painting into areas where you get water collecting. So imagine this is in the rain or just moisture was dripping on it, anything really. What you do is just think about where it would collect, so around bolts and rivets, such as just here, and be quite generous in applying it around them and then streaking it down and having it start to collect in corners. So we're looking at areas like that, for example. Now you can smear it around a little bit if you want to, and if you do draw it up quite a bit, then just get it a certain distance like that. Quickly wash your brush, just make sure it's damp, and just use it to smudge the end of it there, just so it blends smoothly into the surrounding area. But now it's just a matter of applying as much of this as you want. I finished applying those streaks and you can see also I've just done those little stained areas too. You can see particularly towards the bottom down here and in the corner just there and this corner up here too. And so once you're happy with that, the next thing to do is to make it a little bit brighter. And now we're going to use that scrag brown. And the application is very much the same as what we've just done really. Again, you just need to get it on your palette and then thin it down with lots of water so it's very, very runny. And I'm still using my medium sized brush for this. You might want to go for a smaller one depending on what you're doing, but whatever you're comfortable with really, just get it all the way down to about this point just here. Now, once you've got that, all you've got I do is start retracing your steps really, just running it a little bit more into the corners. So for example down here you can see we've got all that staining around there. We just want to make it stronger in these corners just here where you'd get more water collecting. So it's just a matter of again dotting it on and streaking it down from bolts and things, just going over and focusing it a little bit more as you retrace your steps. Now that's done, you can see the colour's getting a bit stronger and you could leave it there if you wanted to, but we're going to push it a bit further with the little spots of the really very brightest, freshest rust on there. For this, what you need is an ochre colour. I'm going to use some Bestigore Flesh for this and I'm going to use the same brush to apply it, but again, you can go for a smaller one if you want to. But with this, it's just the finishing touches, so you just want little dots of it. But again, make sure it's really heavily watered down on your palette, really making sure it's nice and thin about to that point there. And then with it, just start looking for the areas where you want it to be the strongest, really, and the freshest. So that means areas such as this little drip We've got just here, just dotting it into that deepest corner, just making sure it settles around that bolt. And there we go, just there like that. And there we are, the rusty effect is complete. And as you're going to see, compared to some of the other effects we're going to be doing, this one's quite subtle, but that's its strength because it's really easy to control it. It means it's great for doing regular miniatures. So if you're doing something like skeletons and you want to rust up their chain mail, this is the perfect technique for that.
The next method we're gonna take a look at is using some pigment powder. And if you've not encountered this before, essentially it is just a powder. It's basically raw pigment, which you'd normally have floating around in paint. And so it goes on and gives very strong color, but because it's powder, it doesn't dry on in things and doesn't stick to them, meaning you can manipulate it around and change it until you're happy with it. If you don't like it, you can even wash it off and start again. So it's really fun stuff to use, but bear in mind, it does get a little bit messy if you're not careful. So it's always a good idea to make sure you protect your work surface before you start using this stuff. But there's loads of different varieties of this you can get. Loads of companies make it. The ones I'm going to be using here are from Vallejo because they do a cool pack where you get four which are designed from rust and you get four different tones for it that you can build up as you go along and so I'm going to use those for this. And you start out with a darker one. In this case the one I'm going to be using is brown iron oxide which you can see is a really nice sort of warm brown colour. And to apply it there are well loads and loads of ways you can do it. You can even get some of this, add some water to it, turn it into a paste and apply it from there because as it dries it'll go back into powder. And I'm just going to apply it as powder using a dry brush. And I've got a small dry brush here from Citadel for this. All you do is just get some of this on your brush and then get your, well, whatever it is you're painting rust onto. And you can see, once again, I'm using some barricades that I prepared just the same way as the last one. All you do is just apply it to some of it. So for example, applying it around there and then just use the brush to start working it into it, just tapping it down like that. And you can see you start to get that dusty effect appearing on it. And it's really just a matter of manipulating it until you're happy with it. I've finished applying that first powder now and you can see it's starting to get that oxide colour on there. And remember, this is powder. So if you start touching it now, it will start coming off on your fingers. So you do need to be careful with it. But what we're going to do is start building on top of this with three more powders that come in that same set. And they are appropriately called Old Rust, Rust and New Rust. And I'm going to start out with Old Rust, which is the dark of the three. You can see I've got all three lined up here I'm using the same brush for it. And it's a matter of just again applying it and just moving it around until you're happy with it. So you just need to get a little bit of the first colour you want to go for on your brush. And then again, it's just a matter of picking a starting point, so for example around here, and to start to put it on and work it into the previous colour so you start to get some variety in the tone, you start to get some patches building up. So I'm going to carry on doing this now. When we come back we'll start adding a bit more to the pattern of the rust. I finished applying those powders and I'm happy with the effect right now, but I just want to give the impression that it's streaked down a little bit. So to do this, I'm just going to manipulate them a bit on the actual model. To do that, what I've got is a cotton swab. And with this, all we're going to do is just start drawing the powder downwards. And I don't want to do loads of this, just a little bit of it to give the impression of it, you know, of water running down causing this effect. So all we're going to do is just start wiping it downwards like this. And you can see it just smudges it a little bit and gives a slightly drawn down appearance. And there we are, I'm happy with that. So now the time has come to fix this in place. And to do this, what we need is some appropriately named pigment fixer. And again, there's loads of makes of this, loads of brands make it. The one I'm gonna use is this one from AK Interactive. And to use it, what you need to do is just apply it with an older brush. So what I'm gonna use for this is an old medium layer from Citadel. And what you do is just dot this on so that it soaks into the powder. And as it dries, the powder will go back to how it originally was and it'll hold it in place. So it is important you do this, otherwise you're gonna get it all over your fingers as you're moving the scenery around. So all you gotta do is just get some onto the brush and then just pick a starting point and just dot it where possible away from the majority of the powder. So for example, it means dotting it in areas such as just there and you'll see what happens is it starts to soak into the surrounding area and when it dries, it'll go back to its original color and it'll fix it in place. The fix is now completely dry and you can see the finished result. And it really does give a very different appearance to the previous one that we did with acrylics, but it's got a very nice softness to it, a very nice blend between all the different tones that we've got on there. It looks really, really nice. Now this is very much scratching the surface of what you can do with pigments and you can get some quite incredible effects with them by doing all sorts of different tricks and things. So if this has interested you, I definitely encourage you to take a bit of a further look into it. But always remember when you are using them, definitely make sure you fix them down once you're finished. Otherwise they're just gonna come off on your fingers. The next method for rust we're going to take a look at is using a really cool product which is called Dirty Down Rust made by Dirty Down. And here it is, it comes in little bottles like this. And this stuff is really interesting because it looks like a paint. In fact, it's quite inky, but you'll find that once it's on there, if you get it wet, it can start moving again, meaning you can manipulate it once you've got it on. So that's what we're going to be doing here. Now, a key thing I cannot emphasize enough is that you have to make sure it's fully mixed so it's nice and smooth. So you really want to shake it. In fact, 
there is an agitator inside there, but you want to make sure that's moving and you'll probably even want to give it a stir as well to make sure it's all mixed properly, which I already have done. So be sure to do that before you start applying it. And all you do is paint it onto the area where you want to be rusty and then let it dry and then we can start manipulating it. Now this time the canvas I've got for doing this is again a piece of Necromunda scenery, another barricade, but this time I've done it yellow for a completely different colour. This is just a mustard yellow I painted on here. I washed it with a brown wash, dry it yellow once again, then dry it very lightly with a bone colour, and just added a few little silver speckles on there and the little dents and things that we've got. And what we're going to do is just paint this stuff directly over the top. So to apply it, again I recommend going for an older brush. I'm using my old medium shade brush here once again, and all you need to do is just get some of this on your brush and just start painting it onto where the rust is going to go. So all we need to do is just pick a starting point, so here for example, and just start putting it on like this, just dotting it so it goes a bit random, so you get a bit of a varied application across the whole surface. And once you painted it on, just give it around about half an hour to dry. Once that paint is dry, we're then at the really fun part because now what we're going to do is start almost etching into this to get the really rusty, streaky effect. And to do it, all you need is some water because that's going to reactivate the paint. So to do this, go for a medium sized brush, one with a fairly good point. I've got a size one here and all you need to do is just get it damp with water. Now don't put loads on because it will just swamp it and it'll go a bit out of control. So instead, just use some tissue to remove excess, almost as if you're going to be applying a wash, but just water instead. So kind of like that. And then all you do is just start applying this in downward strokes. And for the first few, not much is going to happen because it just starts to get that paint working again. But you'll see the more I do this, it starts to wipe away. And as I go downwards, it gets that streaky appearance. So all you need to do is just keep working away at it. Now, after a little while, you will need to clean your brush because it's picking up some of that paint. So all you do is just wash it in a bit of water. Again, just make sure it's damp with a fairly good point and just keep going away at it until you're happy. I've finished removing that excess paint and you can see it's all fixed down now. It's dried once again and well, as you can see doing this is really simple and I think you could really play around with it for some really interesting effects using different brushes, maybe even a toothbrush and I certainly would encourage you to have a go. But as you've seen doing that is really simple and it looks fantastic as well. The last effect we're going to take a look at for rust is one that's particularly cool because this one is actual rust and you can't get much more realistic than the real deal for this. And it's from this product made by Ammo. This is it. It's U-Rust. And this is really cool. You can get it in a box set like this with loads of options, including verdigris, or you can buy the bottles individually. The choice really is yours. But essentially what you do is paint on the stuff. And then once it's dry, you put this almost activated liquid on it. And there's two of them. And this makes it actually rust and gives you different effects. It means it's a bit random. We don't know exactly how it's going to look when we start going into it but what we do know is it is going to look real because it is real. So to do it what you need to do first of all is set up the area that you're going to paint it on and this one again is a bit different because what I've done is painted it in a more of a red oxide colour because some of this might show through once we're done so I want a colour that's sort of like deep rust so that's why I've gone for this. So what I did was paint it with this reddish brown and then washed it with a brown wash and then lightly dry brushed it with a bone colour and what we're going to do is just paint the stuff directly onto it and there's a bunch of different ones you can go for. The one I'm going for is black oxide so that's this one just here here. And when you get this, what you need to do is make sure it's thoroughly mixed. So really shake it for a while before you use it. You might even want to stir it. But all you need to do is just apply it onto the area where you want it to be rusty. Now I recommend going for an older brush to apply it and a large one at that. And what I've got here is a medium shade brush from Citadel, an older one that I've been using for a while. And all we've got to do is just load up some of this onto the brush and then just start dotting it onto the area that you want to go rusty. So I'm going to do this whole barricade. And when putting it on, just speckle it on randomly like this because this will help the effect as it dries. Now it will take a bit of time to dry, so once you've got it on here, I recommend leaving it for an hour before coming back to it to really get the effect going. That first material is now completely dry and at this stage it doesn't look like much but now what we're going to do is actually get the rust reaction on top of there so it's going to completely transform at this stage and to do it what we need are these two bottles of rust reactor and here they are. You can see there's two sorts, there's type 1 and type 2. Both of them are bright blue but don't be fooled because they're not going to dry that way. With each of these you just need to make sure you give them a really good shake and then to apply them the best thing to do is to get hold of a dimple tray which is what I've got just here because it keeps it nicely collected together when you're going to get ready to apply it and all you need to do is just drop some of this into each dimple. So there's the type one, and then at type two, just pop three drops of that next to it as well. So here we go. 
one, two, and three. And then using your old brush, all you need to do is just start applying this directly over the top of that initial material that you put on there. So I'm still using the same brush here, that medium shade brush. Start with type one, and you can just use one if you want to, but I'm gonna mix them up for both to get more of a varied effect. All you do is literally just start putting it on top of that initial material. So just paint it on there like that. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna randomly start picking up the other one and just start mixing it. And you'll see it goes quite weird and the colors go quite strange, but really just get it all over here and then give it a few hours to dry. We left this piece overnight to fully, uh, well, do its thing. And you can see the final result here is quite incredible. It's changed an awful lot. And now it looks like it's been, well, sat at the bottom of the Atlantic for over a hundred years like the Titanic. Now this is quite an extreme method, of course, because you can see just how rusty it now appears, but it's also completely random and very natural. Meaning if you want a realistic effect, you can't do much better than this. The thing to bear in mind is that it's something that you just need a bit of practice with to get the best results out of it. And also if you're using it on smaller areas, just remember to be careful how much you put on, because once it's on there, you've got to let it do its thing and see how it comes out. So there we go, four fantastic methods of getting four very different results when it comes to using rust, but all of them are indeed rust. And as you've seen, all four of them are really fun and really easy to do as well. Now, if you never tried these sort of techniques, I definitely encourage you to give a go with them because they're a great way of adding that bit of character to your miniatures and to your scenery as well. So have fun using them and we'll see you again very soon. Mm -hmm.